It is my distinct honor to be addressing this gathering of the leadership and residents of Gweru on the occasion to bestow me with the freedom of the city of Gweru. Allow me to admit that when I was informed that I had been conferred with such an honor, I was humbled and pleasantly surprised by such a gesture from the city fathers of Gweru. Congratulations. I want to thank you, Your Worship the Mayor, Councillor Amutendi Kombai, and your fellow councillors. I humbly extend to you my warm appreciation and gratitude. Given that the Gweru City Council is made up of councillors from different political parties, backgrounds and persuasions, this honor is an indication that the decision is apolitical. It is also a demonstration that our democracy is maturing and some political leaders across the political party divide are able to act objectively for the broader national good. This is what it should be in a democratic country. We are all Zimbabweans, and this is our only home and our only country. Congratulations, Gweru. <laughs> Through this act you have done, you further attest to the fact that there is much more than unite us, no matter our party differences and preferences. This is the spirit that should permeate throughout our country, even as we gear up for the upcoming harmonized general elections. Let us remain united, preaching peace, preaching harmony, preaching love among our people. I recall when I was growing up during the time of the oppressive colonial administration, when this city was then called Guelo, we were not privileged to work and move freely in towns and across the country as a whole. I've been telling the mayor, comrade, I'm sure you accept comrade, Comrade Kombai, that in 1964, there was an event here on the 21st, 24th of May, 1964. We held our first Congress to elect the first leadership, the executive of ZANU at Mtapa Hall. And I attended that conference. We were five of us then. We had just completed our military academy training from Nanking Military Academy in China. His father was a good friend of mine, then was a locomotive driver, but a nationalist at the time. Following the protracted liberation struggle and the sacrifices made by the grand sons and daughters of the soil, we regained our land and ultimately attained independence, freedom and democracy as the free men and women of our motherland, Zimbabwe. This honor, which has been bestowed on me by you, thus a tribute to the sacrifices of all the gallant sons and daughters who fought for our independence to build peace, unity, and ultimately the development of our great motherland, Zimbabwe. Gweru is known as the city of progress. As such, I urge you, your worship, the mayor and your councillors, to ensure that this mantra is translated to realities on the ground. We should see 
Gweru differing from year to year in terms of growth and in terms of modernization and industrialization. I'm aware that various areas within the city need improvement. The delivery of quality water and the sewer infrastructure, roads, ICTs, waste management and refugee collection, public lighting, as well as other critical services for our people must be scaled up. The challenges you are facing as a city are not common to Gweru. These challenges are across the board. Most of our urban and rural councils have similar challenges. But we should not bury our heads in sand because we have sanctions upon the country. We must think outside the box and innovate and develop our motherland, our towns from our own domestic resources. As the provincial capital of Midlands province, Gweru, much is expected from the city fathers. Gweru must indeed progress, progress, innovate and modernize, and the burden is upon you, the councillors. You will be remembered either for success or for failure, by future generations. I myself would only be one to be associated with success. I avoid failure. <laughs> While I recognize the fact that not all challenges can be resolved in one day, all local authorities must, however, have clear development plans to enhance service delivery and foster incremental development, sound corporate governance systems, integrity, honesty, and orderliness are essential traits for those holding public office in our local authorities and indeed across the political spectrum of our country. Furthermore, Planning regulations and bylaws should be transformative in line with the changing socioeconomic trends and the demographs. As our society and the cities expand, develop and modernize, it is incumbent upon our local authorities, yourselves, to provide adequate designated industrial zones, factory shells, market areas and the stalls for emerging business and residents. Your worship, my dear mayor. In your statement, you have mentioned that this city, when you took over, not yourselves, but uh, when it became independent, you only had 3,000 population in Iguelo. But now you are 1,2 million people, if I'm correct, as you mentioned. Which means you need to be ahead of population growth in terms of provision of services to the people. You must always plan ahead to facilitate the growth of the town. I also call upon the private sector to embark on various corporate social responsibility programs for the benefit of their customers and the communities in which they operate in. In fact, the burden of growth and modernization of a city does not squarely fall upon the council itself, but from the citizens, the private sector, the corporate world has a role to play in the development and the modernization and the industrialization of a city. The national cleanup and beautification programs should be taken seriously and see the ambience of Gweru improving. Resources must be allocated to activities such as planting trees and flowers, as well as grass cutting along roadsides and other public places. We should not be pride in admiring cities of other countries. 
We take pride in beautifying our own domestic cities in our motherland, Zimbabwe. The city of Gweru is home to the Midlands State University, Mukoba Teachers College, and the Gweru Polytechnic College, among other strategic national institutions. I urge you to leverage on the capabilities and the competencies of these organizations as we implement the smart city concept and modernize the city. Developed countries, which we call the first world, were developed through science and technology taught at institutions of higher learning. We must therefore give the challenges which we face as institutions to these institutions to develop solutions, to develop methods and services and products for the use by our people. Information communication technologies and other contemporary strategies must be effectively deployed to accelerate the modernization of our beloved city, Gweru. The talented young girls and boys at the innovation hubs and industrial parks should be tasked to come up with solutions which enhance service delivery. I wonder whether your worship the mayor, you, do you occasionally take your council to the innovation hub at MSU to see what innovations, inventions, the talent our young girls and boys have. Give them challenges and they'll provide you with solutions. If you have not done so, this is what I say to you. Go there. Go and see what they are doing at the innovation hubs. Go and see what they are doing in industrial parks, which we as the Second Republic finance. They themselves must dream and extract the dream from their heads, translating it to products or service to the people. I also challenge local authorities to ride on my government's engagement and re-engagement policy to establish partnerships and the twinning arrangements that will leapfrog governance systems within your local authorities. I don't know, I'm not briefed on this one, I don't know how I many cities you have been twinned to. You should, through your means of local government, twin Guero City to progressive, well-advanced cities. It's not wise to go and twin with a city behind you in terms of development. In the context of provincial economies, both rural and urban councils must equally attract investment towards the growth of provincial GDP. Capital goes where it feels safe. Hence, I challenge you to improve your ease of doing business environment in line with national barometer and the global best practices. Midlands is endowed with the good agricultural land. Midlands is endowed with a lot of minerals, but they all of them in those subsectors of the economy come to Gweru, their capital city, to trade. Do you engage them? Do you discuss with them? Do you challenge them? and say, what contributions do you make to the growth and GDP of your province? The GDP of your city must grow from year to year. As you do so, always keep the residents continuously engaged and a dialogue openly, as opposed to restricting interactions within them during the budget formulation process only. The residents must be engaged from January to December, not only when you want money from them. As we entrench our democracy, participatory governance and the private sector-led development, 
in our country, our people's voice must be heard and their views taken on board. The voice of the people is the voice of God. Do not leave your people behind. Your worship, my dear comrades, combine. I have heard what you have said and I'm glad to work with you as the President of the Republic of Zimbabwe. I want to assure you that the Second Republic remains available to exchange progressive ideas towards transforming our cities and the country as a whole. However, it is the local authorities who must live up to their primary mandate of delivering responsive and people-centered quality services at the community level. In view of the evident shortcomings within local authorities to collect and prudently utilize the resources of red pairs, my government is in the process of availing financial resources for the improvement of water and the sewer reticulation systems, rehabilitation development of roads, ICTs, refuse removal and public lighting, among others. We have decided as central government that yes, most of our local urban councils, including rural councils, are facing serious challenges. There is no need, it is not wise to leave anyone or any community behind. Hence, we have decided already as central government to extend our support to local authorities, urban councils, where we see you are focused on development. We give you support. <laughs> Meanwhile, it is encouraging that devolution funds availed under the devolution and decentralization program have resulted in beneficial people-centered projects. If you continue using them this way, in a prudent manner, Tino Ezera, Tigo Ezera, Tigo Ezera. Let us not tire and continue on this positive course so that all citizens across the country, within both rural and urban local authorities, have access to reliable services. Going forward, I have tasked the ministers responsible for local government, finance, the Public Service Commission, and representatives from my office to continuously review our intergovernmental fiscal transfer model. Notwithstanding this, local authorities must be proactive in the scale up efforts to collect revenue and prioritize implementation of programs and projects. The resident and red pair of Gweru deserves better and should receive value for the rates, fees, and charges that they pay. Nika inova kwa igo tongwa nebe nebayo. Ilizwe la kiwa libuswe ngabani kazivalo. Hakuna nika inotongwa nerumwe ruzi. Vari zivari mo. Kana zaiti kai zozo. Vane nge waka zanyiriru wawane nika iyoyo. Maria ane kudenga aga pa mwene ba mwepoku garapavo Ma Japani kwa o kujapani Ma China kwa bo nanyo kazavo Ma British kwa bo, ma American kwa bo, ma German kwa bo, ma French kwa bo Isumuno Wanoda kutibatsira wa vakure Nga watibatsire pati panezo atine nge taronga Kwete kuya wakaronga kuti Tuwe inda kuzimbabwe, tine swataka ronga kuna itae koko. Wete. We as the people of Zimbabwe, there is no turning back on the issue that we are independent. We are ourselves. We own our land. We own mbena zedu. Kwete ini? Mbena chaizu. We own mbena zedu. Nyoka zedu. Kamba zedu. Shiri zedu, muka zedu, taka kwa na muka dimenyika yedu, zose tinazu. Amenwe vane shungu, 
kuno rovora kwa America kana kuno rovora kwa America zose zviri muno Zimbabwe shall be prosperous and empowered upper middle income by 2030 no one and no place will be left behind including the city of Gweru on the basis of focusing and the thinking outside the box using our own resources which God gave us the endowments of this country given to us we must utilize them zvakanzi muna genesis muchari kacheziya ndo kushanda kwa tri kuita tri kutevedza bible kuti zvishandire iwa no vakuru dzimwe nyika vanosire nyika yokupanga vashande kwavo zvishanda kwedu esteemed councillors and indeed the entirety of the gweru community I once again thank you for this honor of the confirmation of the freedom of the city of Gweru. I humbly, warmly, and deeply appreciate this gesture, which I am pleased to accept. Thank you. God bless you all. God bless Zimbabwe. And thank you.